I want to use for a few minutes this morning a thought that I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? And obviously the first thing you're going to say, well, are we ready for what? Which reminds me of a, of a, of a young pastor who had just gone to his first little church, like in Wheatland, a little small town, and he decided uh, before the Sunday services that he'd get out and he'd do a little visiting around the town and, and uh, get acquainted with some of the people. And so the first house he stopped, that little man was out in his front yard and he was working and the pastor stopped and introduced himself and you know as, as young preachers were always full of fire and vinegar and he introduced himself and he said the old fellow said sir have you been saved and the old fellow said I don't know he said well he said I want to ask you he said are you ready for the judgment the old fellow said well I don't know he said when's it going to be and the pastor said, well, he said, it could be today, it could be tomorrow. And the old fellow said, for the Lord's sake, don't tell my wife, she'll want to go both days. So, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, what, what I would like for you to think about this morning is, is are, are you ready? And, and obviously the first time, the first thing we think of is, are we ready uh, to stand before the judgment? Are we saved? And most of you can answer that in the affirmative. But I, I think there are some other things that, uh, that, we, uh, that are taught in the Word of the Lord that we need to be aware of. Is that uh, the, the, um, the Scripture says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, we need to be ready at all times. Not just whenever... Things are going well, and we can say, golly, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to when the Lord's going to come. There are probably are going to be some times in our lives where that we're just not quite ready yet. And, and that's, that can be expected. There are going to be some times whenever that we're not going to feel the presence of the Lord like we like to. And there may be reasons that uh, we're in that situation, but uh, we, need, we need to be as ready as is possible because we do not know when that time is going to come to any one of us. Uh, I, uh, I, I sat down last week and, and looked back through several of the church events that we've had here over the past few years that I've taken pictures of, and I was amazed at how many of the people in these pictures are not here anymore. They, they've, they've already died. They've, they've gone on. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before that if I were to ask how many of you were here when I came here 20 plus years ago, there would be very few hands that would go up because most of you have come since that time. And that, again, just kind of shows how the face has changed over time and how uh, quickly that the, 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 the uh, fact that we're going to leave the walks of this life take place. So we need to be ready uh, whenever that time does come. Paul writing, or not Paul, Oh, Peter writing said, be ready uh, always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. We need to be able to tell other people about what the Lord has done in our life. And, and I can assure you this this morning that we miss many opportunities that God gives us because we aren't sensitive enough to know that God is allowing someone else to, to present themselves to us and give us the opportunity to share the Lord with them. Now, it's not always going to be in the programmed script. It's not always going to be whenever that we've come here to church or it's not always going to be uh, whenever that we've, quote, gone out here to witness to someone. There will be some unexpected times and there will be some unexpected people that from time to time are going to, you're going to have the opportunity to share the Lord with and what he's done 
and your heart and your life. And you need to be ready when that opportunity presents itself to be able to do it. It doesn't have to be elaborate. doesn't have to be anything fancy. But what it does need to be is sincere. It needs to come from your heart. And you need to be able to give them an explanation as to what you're talking about when you're talking about the goodness of the Lord and you're talking about the salvation of the Lord. And, and certainly there is no way that you can ever just put into words exactly what happened when the Lord saved you. Now I can tell you all the things the Scripture says and you can tell all the things, but it is, it is just not possible for us to be able to tell precisely what has, that happens when it does. But we know that it did. We know that God is involved in and that's because God reserves that for himself. Uh, Paul said this. He said, For so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. As much as in me is. I tell people that uh, I sometimes go away from here after being here for an hour and after having preached, and, and I literally am drained. Now, I, I'm sure that you don't understand that. I, I truly, I know you don't think this is the easiest thing that is the world. Why in the world anybody would feel that way about it? But there are some times whenever literally I leave here and I just feel like I am totally drained because I put everything there is in me into it. And I love to do that. I love to be able to stand up here and to tell you. And so I can understand what the Apostle Paul was saying when he said, For as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And so I think that whenever that we do have the opportunity to tell other people the Lord about the Lord, it needs to be something that we're excited about, that we, we are proud of, and that we're thankful that God has given us the blessings that He's blessed us with, that we have His presence and His Spirit, and that we need to be willing to share that. And to do that, the very best that we possibly can. Uh, the Apostle Peter is, is a prime example of one who said, boy, I'm ready, whenever in fact he was not. So be careful, uh, as, as, as uh, he had written in another place here, whenever he said, you need to be able to give a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. Because he got a little cocky at one time. And the Lord, whenever he had said, you know, all of you are going to be offended because of, because of me, because of the Lord, you're going to be offended. Now, there's not a single one of you here this morning who are a child of God. So, well, I tell you what, I wouldn't be offended because of the Lord. Oh, yes, you are. There are times whenever that doesn't take much to offend you when it comes to the Lord. Because you'll shut up quicker than anything I can imagine, and you won't take advantage of the opportunity that the Lord said. And you'll have some excuse as to why that you didn't do what the Lord wanted you to do. You know, were you offended? Was there something about it? Let me tell you. The Apostle Peter said, whenever the Jesus said unto him, said, all of you are going to be offended because of me this night. Peter said, listen, I want to tell you, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Peter said, I'm, I'm, ready, to, I'm ready to go to prison with you. I'm ready to die for you. Well, it wasn't but just a few hours but he not only was one of the first ones to forsake the Lord and to be offended, but he was one of the first ones to turn tail and to run and to warm his hands at the enemy's fire. Are you ready? Sometimes I think maybe we think we're ready when really we're not. We, we get this idea that we can do a lot of things on our own. The truth of the matter is we need the Lord's help every single time. There isn't a time, whatever, that you're going to be effective enough. I, I, I've just, it, it has taken years, I guess, for this truly to hit home with me as to how, how important it is that the Spirit of God work because it is impossible to do His work without His Spirit. I don't care how learned you are. I don't care how many times you pray. I don't care how much scripture you know. Without the Spirit of God, it will be, as Paul said, sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. It takes the Holy Spirit of God working in the hearts of both His children and the unsaved alike. So I can assure you that we need Him uh, in, in our lives all the time. 
Are we ready? Let me tell you, in the Old Testament, one of the greatest examples of a people that needed to be ready was when the children of Israel were getting ready to leave Egypt. And the Lord came to uh, them and he said, you know what, this night the death angel is going to pass through the land. Every house that does not have the blood applied that the firstborn out of that household will be taken. Death was going to come to that household, excepting that you follow the instructions that I will give you. And it happened. There were people who were not ready. There were people who thought, just as we do today, well, I've got more time. I've got another opportunity. I'll do it whenever it's more convenient for me. Let me tell you something. I'm convinced as surely as I stand before you this morning that already in the portals of heaven, every single one of our times are recorded. And when that time comes, you aren't going to stay. You aren't going to say the hand of God Almighty whenever he says, go get him, go get her, whichever it may be. We, we can do everything in the world. You know, I, I marvel at the, at the uh, ability that we have today, the, the, the medical field of the things that we can do to these old bodies today. And yet there are many things that we've still not been able to figure out. We've not been able to conquer. But the one thing that we are never going to be able to overcome is that thing that's called death. It is going to happen. There isn't going to be any cure for that insofar as dying this natural death because every one of us says it's pointed and a man wants to die after death of judgment. But let me tell you, those people, uh, many of them were ready. In the, in the New Testament, probably the best example is the, the um, ten virgins who waited for uh, the bridegroom to come, five wise, five foolish. And about midnight, the cry went out, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Now, midnight probably was a time where they were all asleep. They'd all gone to sleep. They had given up. They didn't think it was going to happen. And they'd all gone to sleep. But five of them had made preparation beforehand. Five of them had not. They're, they're, they, you know, don't ever for a second, because again, the Bible teaches that there will be two in the, in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Let me tell you, don't, don't get the con misconception here, or don't get the, uh, the, the idea that 50% of the people are going to die and go to heaven, and 50% will die and go to hell. That's not, that's not scriptural. What he's pointing out here is that there will be separation. There will be division. There are going to be those who are going to be taken and those who are going to be left. And so it was with these five wise and five foolish, those who had made preparation, they were ready. When the cry came out, they came and woke, all of them woke up, but five of them did not have any oil in their lamps, and consequently they were, they were left to suffer the consequences of not being prepared for that time. Are you ready? Ready for what? Well, some of you probably are thinking, yeah, I'm ready for death whenever it comes. I'm asking you this morning, are you ready to go out here and do what the Lord would have you to be doing in His work? And I hope that you can say that I am. But we only can do that because of His grace and His goodness. The Apostle Peter believed with everything it was about him that he was ready and that he truly was going to stand for the Lord no matter what anybody else did. Sometimes we get this mistaken idea that we'll stand. I tell people every once in a while, I, I don't know what I would do in certain circumstances. I know what I hope I would do. I know what I think I would do. But I don't know until I'm truly in that situation. I hear people say, oh, I'd never do that. No, you don't know that. You think that. You hope that. But I guarantee you one thing. Sometimes we'll do a lot different than what we think we will. It's only by the grace of God and by His help that we're we're able to do the things that we can do. And I hope that we can always keep that in our minds and that we can be humble enough that we can do under His leadership what it is and that we can be ready. Ready not only for death whenever it comes, ready not only for the judgment whenever it comes, but ready to go out here and to tell others about Him and that they'll be ready when that time comes in their life.